happening hc nation hey sorry that it's been a while since i've done these uh these videos on the historical conquest card review and discussion board long word of saying this is tutorial tuesday and we're back okay so right now it's not tuesday it's actually thursday but i, I was meaning to do this on tuesday this is why i hired on an executive assistant she is now working on keeping me on task when it comes to getting these videos out because these are still important. These are top priority because I want you guys to know that we are here for you and answering your questions. <clears throat> so um, if you wanna join up with the Historical Conquest card review and discussion board on Facebook, this is the page. So come to this page, join us and be part of the discussion. This is actually where you can ask questions and also answer other people's questions. So come check it out. Uh, for today, we're gonna to go through a few of them. There's actually a, quite a bit because I haven't been able to do this since basically midsummer, uh, went on vacation and then getting back into school, getting my kids ready for, for school and they're, they're learning everything. And also we are now going out for what's called VC money, venture capitalist money, investment money. The reason why we're doing this is because hunt the past is now exploding. There is so much interest in this, uh, site. We have people joining on daily, trying to get more information on, uh, everything from, uh, curriculum, for a historical curriculum. Um, we have everything from basically choose your own history lessons. So you can put your own lessons together to preset history lessons. We're working on these preset ones now. As of right now though, you can go in and check out almost every card in historical conquest and find the units on those people. So you can get a lot more information, including videos, books, uh, activities you can do. So check that out. Um, but that's a really big thing and especially our newest edition, which will be the Digitalized Historical Conquest game. That's really exciting. I'm excited to get that going. And actually, I wasn't gonna show you this, but we're here now. This is our next game. So this is going to be, yeah, this is the first view. I usually do this on a sneak peek, uh, either Wednesday or Thursday. It used to be sneak peek Thursday, but now we changed it to Wednesday. We're getting this all solid. From now on, this will be done on a consistent basis because we want to give you consistency on our YouTube channel and also on Facebook where we're going to post it there. But this is our next game. This is conquering the timeline. This is basically where you get five cards from all different parts of history and you can actually narrow it down into different eras. So if you want to do the presidents, you'll get five of the presidents and you'll be able to place them in what order you think the presidents are at. You get to compete against other people. So it'd be player one versus player two right now. Um, in the future, it'll be up to four players, but this is all digital on our hunt the past, um, system, sorry, website hunt the past is there to help you understand the, um, basically, uh, your, your timeline, your history, your social studies, all these different things, but we do it in a fun way, including games. Now this will also have a leaderboard. So you'll be able to see, get five up to five stars and also get points for how many every time you play to be like the national champion online. And you'll be able to play with people around the world, but th because we wanna keep in mind the security of all youth, because that's all that's allowed on here, youth, teachers, and parents are the only ones that are allowed on this system. And so by doing that, we usually keep you fairly safe, but with this game, there is no interaction with your opponent. There's no uh, texting or chatting with them because we want to keep it secure. So this is the, uh, first version of this new game that we're coming up with, which will be our digital game for conquering your timeline. So you'll be able to learn people's names and also where they belong in the timeline. So stay tuned for this. Again, this is another product that will be on, uh, huntthepast.com. So join in. You also get the digital version of, um, historical conquest as well. So, and then one other view, this is what the screen will actually look like in full. And, uh, with, we have one that's historical conquest. We have another conquering the timeline. These people will change depending on the game. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm loving this. I, we just got it in a few, like a, maybe less than an hour ago. So now coming back to here, let's go into the reason why we're all here, right? So the first one is create an equal lead question mark. 
Uh, what category is creator in? Can you can it be considered a leader, businessman, or both? Well, this is my business card. So I'm the only creator in this game right now. Uh, down in the text, you'll actually see that uh, Dane actually put in there, well, isn't God a creator too? Yes, he is, but not in the game. Uh, I actually asked, yes, but what should the powers be? And this is what he came up with. So great thinking. That's not going to happen right now because there's no one that gives that much morale. So um, plus we keep it secular just so you guys know so that people in public schools and private schools and Montessori schools and everyone can play. If we are to do something biblical, it'll be something separate, but um, nothing as of this point. The next one says this, what happens when? Do you round up or down with Bloody Sunday? Now, unless it says on the card, it's always round down. It's actually in the rules. So round down. Um, cards like, uh, it was like the San Francisco earthquake. I think it says round up. Um, so if you see it on the card, then round up. Otherwise, round down. What happens, question number two, what happens when someone reverses the bombing of Hamburg? Does the person who played Hamburg lose their turn, lose their next turn, or does Hamburg just get discarded? Well, I need to put that up here because I didn't do that. Um, but I also don't want to finish this page. So let's go to the handy dandy encyclopedia. I need to put some sort of cover on here, make it look nice and pretty. But if I go to the encyclopedia, which is every card in Historical Conquest, all 600 and something of them, if I go to events, let's see, countries, locations, Huh, where did my fence go? Oh, that's right. His countries and lands. Okay. Bombing of Hamburg. Bombing of Hamburg. Right there. Okay. It says, interrupt. On your opponent's turn, declare war and attack his or her land once. This ends your opponent's turn until the next round. So, in the question it says, what happens when someone reverses the bombing of Hamburg? Okay. What's a reverse? A reverse affects the opponent that's basically what it is reverse means that it affects the opponent so on your turn so if it's i'm playing this it's on my turn i declare war and attack his or her or sorry on my opponent's turn so it's their turn i say hey i'm going to attack you and i don't even know it's not your turn i'm going to attack you this ends your opponent's turn until the next round so if I reverse it, it would be if I'm playing it on you and it's your turn, then it basically you're declaring war on me. Um, but in the question, it says, uh, let's see, does Hamburg, uh, does the person who played Hamburg lose their next turn? Well, in reverse, this ends your opponent's turn until the next round. Then, yes, it would. That would be a reverse. That's a great reverse. I've never actually thought about that one. But yes, it would actually end that person's turn. So if I play battle, uh, the bombing of Hamburg on you and you reverse it on me, you get to finish your turn and you basically skip me until the next round. So, wow, that's a really powerful question. Thank you for submitting that. Now, the next one says, can you hold the abilities of constant cards? Can you hold the ability of constant cards? Example, let's say I play Caesar Augustus Germanicus. And my opponent doesn't have any character cards in play. Do I A, lose Caesar's ability, or B, use it when my opponent plays a character card? Okay, so let's go over to Caesar. Caesar is a conqueror. Caesar Augustus Germanicus, correct? Yes. Okay, that is right there. So it says, select one opponent's character to go insane. My son loves using this one on me. We just played two days ago, and uh, he played it on Guy Fox, which is a card you put in someone else's land and you can't remove. So we put that in my in my land, and then he made Caesar put him in, uh, make him go insane. Not a nice one because you can't get rid of him. So that's a secret move, just so you know. But it says uh, select one opponent's character to go insane. That player loses 100 morale each turn until character is discarded. So it's a constant infinite, meaning that the person's um, 
a bit, uh, basically it's constantly used on this person until they're discarded. Now he's saying, what if they don't have a character or what, what if they don't have any character cards in play? Well, they can't actually be in existence without a character card. So let me explain this a little bit more in depth. You have your lands out. Say there's only one land. And if there's no one defending that land, the land's in limbo, which means you can walk in and just take it. So if you're playing Caesar, that ability cannot work. And it's the beginning of the game. Let's go back. If it's the beginning of the game, so the first two rounds, and you play Caesar, you can't affect your opponent. It's not just that you can't attack, you can't interact. So you can't do anything negative on them or even positive on them. There's no interaction between you and your opponent for the first two rounds. So if this is the reason why there's no characters in play, then for the first two rounds, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Now he's asking you, can I hold it? So say he plays it and then he picks it. So it doesn't say instantly you have to choose a character. Maybe that's a, an error that needs to be reconciled. So I would say, yes, you can hold on to it because it does not say you can't just pick one later on. And it's a constant. If it was an I, then that would be one thing. But this one is a constant, so you can pick one character. So basically hold on to that ability until you come comes to play. If you have a question with that, please put it in the comments below. I'd love to have, see your insight. That is what I need in order to make the best judgment on this one. Because that's a, a new thing I didn't think about. Anyways, number question number four. Can you change the choice of a constant card after you have played it, such as the heliocentric solar system, which is a knowledge card. So K comes before L. Knowledge card. Hmm, where are my knowledge cards? There they are, okay. Heliocentric solar system, choose. With this knowledge, double one of your, one of the following, all of your knowledge, technology or document cards. So if you put it in play, right when you put it in play, that card needs to be chosen. So I guess that goes back to Caesars as well. So as soon as you play, you have to pick a, a character. And then for the rest of the time after that, uh, they're affected, making it the constant work. And the only way to get rid of that is get rid of Caesar or get rid of the, the character that they were cursed or, or gone insane. So those two ways um, are the ways to knock out that ability. So here's the official ruling for number three and number four. As soon as you play it, you have to choose. And then you don't go, you don't get to pick another card afterwards when it comes to Caesar, another character after that person's discarded, it's done. With number four, the heliocentric solar system, you have to pick whether it's going to be knowledge, technology, or documents, and then stick with that one for the life of that card. If you discard it and bring it back, then you can change it because that's when abilities reset. But you have to choose right away. So hold on to Caesar and hold on to the heliocentric solar system until there's a card that you really want to uh, make go insane or to double their abilities through the heliocentric solar system. Okay, so those are the official rulings on that. Uh, going down, it looks like Dane put some information in here. He said, no, can you hold the abilities? I would agree with Dane on um, number three and four, no as well. Dane, you're right on the spot. Thank you for submitting that. Okay, next one. Can you help a new member? Can you help a new member? Okay, uh, these are just, I think these are more admin questions, but might as well answer them here. Uh, Bethany is my executive assistant and she's the one that puts them up here because she doesn't know the answers right away. And again, Dane answered the, some of the questions. Um, and I think I answered some of them as well, but let me go over these really fast. Is there a graphic that breaks down the anatomy of the card? Uh, yes, there is. Um, it's in the rule sheet on the website itself. So go find the rule sheet. It's under, I think the learn tab at the top of the page. Number two, how do you best store the cards? Um, everyone has different ways. Uh, Dane says that he uses an Ultra Pro brand deck box. Um, we have other deck boxes as well. 
that we use, or again, I put them in a folder, especially the ones that I'm not using. That way the cards are protected. Uh, let's see, number three, is there an easy way to tell which pack of cards are, or which pack the decks, the cards are from? Um, on the website, there's under the learn tab, there's a master list. Look at the master list. It'll tell you exactly what cards are in each deck and each pack. And I think we even added the randomized decks as well. So number four, I don't seem to have any card labels, uh, labeled vessels. What's the secret here? Um, so vessels are actually a new addition with the newest print. Uh, let's see. Vessel cards. So there are five of them. There are five of them. So in these five, these five have come from the, let's see. We have the Fulker, which comes from, uh, let's see, the World War I deck. We have the Red Ball Express World War II deck. Uh, Star of the West comes from the Civil War. Uh, Vickers, which comes from World War I deck. And the Zeppelin, that comes from World War I deck. In the regular decks, there are no vessels at this time, um, but we will be adding them, especially with a new one, which is a majority female deck. So stay tuned for that. Um, we actually might promote that first on our digital game, the Digital Historical Conquest. So stay tuned for that. That'd be really awesome to, to show you um, as it comes out. We already have the names. We just have to do the history and get the illustrations. And that's the most expensive part. OK, so number five, I've combined all of our packs. Is that good or bad? It's either way. The game is completely customizable, so you can actually take out the best cards Remove the cards you don't like or don't want to use for a certain scenario and play that way. You can also take out like all the cards from the uh, American history. If you're studying American history, take all the rest of them out, all the world history, and just play with two decks of American history. There's enough of them, so you can be doing that. Um, if you have certain eras, you can customize them for that. The game's completely customizable, so uh, that's a great question. Number six, final question. I saw one video with colored sleeves for cards. Are those DIY or purchased and where? Uh, you can actually purchase them on our website. It's under the starter deck uh, link. And also you can purchase them at uh, other retailers around. So we all have them evenly priced. Just an added bonus if you come on and buy stuff from our our website, you can always add to those. They're, they should be the exact same price everywhere else. So. Thank you so much for, oh, wait, wait, wait. There's one more. I don't think I got to last time. Uh, this one is from Jeremy Poole. It says, my little brother was wondering if the Pony Express would allow him to move an opponent's card. Oh, that's a great question. So this one says, transport one character or army to any land. <clears throat> uh, yeah, let's see what other people say. If he was to play it, on an opponent's land, I would think so. I was wondering myself. Okay, so Mark said that's what he would suggest. This is what he would suggest. Okay, so ownership of the land does apply. So unless a card says you can use your opponent's land, it's still their ownership of that card. So you know you cannot uh, you cannot take it, their card and move it somewhere else. Um, I think I actually answered this the other way, but I was thinking there is an ownership rule in there, basically where it's your civilization, your cards. Now, if a card actually says you can take an opponent's card, that gives you the ownership of a card of your choice. This one is just a character, and you have to respect the ownership of that card. So official ruling is that no, you cannot move another person's card. Now, there is a card that says, can you rescue one that's about to be sent to the discard? Even if they're being discarded, they, are, they still fall within the ownership rules. They do belong to someone else. So you do not have any control of it. If the card actually says, uh, rescue one of your opponent's characters from the discard pile, then yes, you could play that one. Actually, that seems like an amazing card. I want that card. Uh, if someone gets this video and puts it in the create your own card contest, that might be a, a good choice for me to, to get that one to win. 
Um, yep, I think that we are up to date on those. So stay tuned for this page. We are going to be constantly updating and adding new ones. So thank you so much for joining us on this uh, tutorial Tuesday, which is actually being placed on Thursday. But we're planning to, to keep consistent on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Catch up on the videos and get ready for a great weekend. Hopefully you can have a great weekend. We're going to see if we can have a great weekend this weekend. So have a great weekend. Take care. Bye. Is that confusing? Shouldn't have been. Also, subscribe. Uh, check out our other videos. I don't know where the uh, little boxes are going to be, so they're going to be somewhere in here. But uh, this is for our YouTube channel. If it's this post on Facebook or anywhere else, sorry, this is going to act weird. But hey, it's uh, this is also for our YouTube channel. So thanks so much for joining us. We'll catch you next time. Bye. If you have any comments or questions, add them to the comments below. Otherwise, we'll see you next. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Actually, take care. Bye.